What's up guys? So I'm sure everyone's heard of the 555 and all its uh, fantastic modes, including monostable mode, which I won't be explaining how that works in this video, but that will kind of be the topic in any case. So there were two things that always kind of frustrated me about this uh, circuit. The first one is that you need a low pulse, as opposed to a high going pulse, a rising edge, like seems like everything else works with. And the second thing is that your input pulse has to be shorter than what you want your output to be. So for example, if you have a simple square wave clock going into the input and you want the output to be a short pulse at the rising edge uh, that lasts, for example, 10% of the duty cycle or whatever it may be, um, that's going to be a little bit of a problem because you need to first invert the input and then also run it through an RC circuit to detect the peak and then feed that into the 555. So it seems like a lot of work to get a very simple output. So in this video, I'll explain how it works, build the circuit, and in the end, explain the advantages and a few limitations of it. Okay, so let's take a look at how the circuit works. So to start off, the input is low. That's the default state of things, which means the master reset here is obviously also low and the capacitor here is discharged the output is also low and um, this means that Q inverted here is high which turns on the capacitor and discharges our resistor here or sorry discharges the capacitor and um, this also means that the output here is low which uh, doesn't reset the flip-flop and uh, this state here is high but uh, the master reset uh, overrides any set here so when uh, we decide to bring the input high uh, this brings the master reset high so it's not active anymore and for a brief moment the capacitor here is still low uh, while it's charging and um, this means that the the flip-flop here gets set and the output goes high and uh, shortly after the capacitor charges and so the output here is not high anymore uh, this point though the Q inverted also changes becomes low which means the transistor isn't on anymore and the capacitor here starts charging. Now at a certain point the voltage here will pass two-thirds VCC and that will bring the output also high and uh, this will reset the flip-flop and bring the output low. This will also turn the capacitor or sorry turn the transistor back on and uh, start or sorry not start but actually discharge uh, very quickly our capacitor here and uh, at this point we're kind of at almost at the state that we were in the beginning but the input here you can see doesn't really uh, do anything and we have to wait till it goes back low to be able to re-trigger things because the input here the set becomes back high and uh, it's overridden by master reset which keeps the output low at this point um, this is also low at this point everything is like it was in the beginning and uh, the the circuit is ready to get re-triggered all right now it's time to build this thing so first thing we do is uh, put the 555 and hook it up to power Next thing, we can attach the first RC circuit on the input side. And after that, we put the second RC circuit attached to pin 6 and 7. Next, I attach a push button with a pull-down resistor to the input number 4, which is the reset pin. And to better visualize what's going on, I can attach an LED with current limiting resistor to the input, which is uh, the switch. And an LED to the output, which is pin number 3, always with a 1K resistor. Now you can see when I push the button, the input LED stays on while the output LED turns on momentarily and turns off by itself. 
So next thing we can do is uh, feed it a square wave at the input and instead of the 10k resistor on the second RC circuit on pin 6 and 7 we can put a 10k potentiometer. Now if we look at the waveform on the oscilloscope we can see that it uh, goes between 0 and uh, 50% in this case because the input duty cycle is the maximum that we can achieve. Okay, so a few final notes here. The first one is uh, to always keep in mind that the output pulse can only be as short as the input. And the second note is that the time constant on the first RC circuit, meaning on pin 2, has to be as short as possible because this will determine the minimum output time. And with uh, this in mind, you should get a pretty clean output. Uh, this can be, for example, used for a PWM control and um, servo control. In fact, I might make a video on both of those topics in the future. And another interesting thing is that the pulse duration can be voltage controlled through pin 5, which is the control pin. So having said that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave any comments if you got questions, I'll be glad to answer them. And I'll see you in the next video.